Uh, yes, welcome. Greetings, the name of the Most High. Uh, oh, sorry, getting started a little bit late today. Uh, you know, it, it just just a little, um, you know, I guess a, a praise report. I had, uh, you know, those of us who had spoken up, you know, and when the Zeph report began, you could make, you know, you could say that at that point, uh, I and others like me were soft killed meaning whatever we used to do in the world, those doors were shut. There was no longer economic viability in, you know, in any, you know, in writing or, or music or producing whatever, you know, whatever I was involved in, the arts in general. Those doors all shut on that day. And um, I've been pondering this for like a day because when Randy Quaid came out and talked about the Star Whackers, and at that time, Ronnie Chasen was gunned down on Sunset Right at Whittier, those of you who know where that is, realize <laughs> the logistics of that. Understand the case. They even talk about reopening it. But uh, uh, he was, it was right in that time where he had come forward about uh, people like Heath Ledger and other um, celebrities being literally whacked. And not tying it to Satanism and satanic ritual, and all that stuff. But just saying, yeah, they, uh, they get your bank account. It's, you know, basically gang stalking. They take your property. They get control of you. And they whack you. They don't whack everybody, but we're all aware of, there's, a, there's an inordinate amount of deaths, let's say, in Hollywood, uh, back in the '90s, my friend friends used to tell me, "Oh, so and so bought it today, and so and so." And don't you find that strange? They kept asking, "Don't I find it strange?" These people dropping dead right and left uh, from time to time, and on different seasons and different times. So he got onto that, and then he came forward, and when he did. He got, he was already being soft killed, meaning they'd taken his property, royalties from films, all kinds of nefarious stuff. Really, really terrible what they did. And uh, he came forward and his career in Hollywood, that, that would mean like, say, studio movies and things like that, ended that day. Which he wasn't aware... He wasn't aware that that would happen. Uh, he wasn't aware that that would be the consequence. He actually did a song. Uh, people may not remember this, but it's on YouTube. Called Star Whackers. They put a band together. And he did a he did a, a shtick, you know. It was kind of a funny act in a way, but it was also very serious. Since that time, he and his wife Evie uh, lived in, you know, uh, kind of like almost a hand to mouth kind of thing. I think they had some. Uh, they didn't have the money they used to have, and they didn't have the money from the royalties from films that was tied up. There was a charge that they had. A trash house walked out on a hotel bill, and so they tried to make him look in the press that these two were crazy, and then they were living in Canada in a little, um, what might be considered like a little hotel room or motel room type of thing, no bigger than that. I mean, very harsh circumstances. And what I noticed about them is. They kind of made the best of it. They put a, the best face on it when they would do YouTubes. And, and I'm sure a couple of you have followed along. The reason that I follow, of course, is because it's, it's in my wheelhouse to do so, just like the Ronnie Chase murder, and, uh, which was not for money. It was, it was like a Seth Rich type of thing, okay? Except that she was beloved, right? She wasn't an enemy. But that's the thing. Beloved go to. So Randy was out there talking about it, and the next thing you know, he's in Canada, and there's no work. And this went on for a number of years. And finally, I see that he got some work recently 
and it's an indie film. I don't know what level it is in terms of distribution. I don't know anything. It's it's about a fat farm, I think, or something. It's a comedy. Uh, pretty sure he dyed his hair dark. He had that fabulous mane of gray hair and a big giant like rabbi beard. Anyway, he. Uh, it was good to see that he was working because I actually prayed because I realized he doesn't know this stuff. He doesn't know about the spiritual battle. He doesn't know about, um, you know, the, the real warfare here. He doesn't really understand what's going on. He didn't understand that, you know, some of these hits in Hollywood are, are, are ritual uh, sacrifices, right? He didn't understand any of that. He did, the, he's not really very spiritual at all. He's really just... You know, I, I don't know, to the, the opinion I got of them, and they did some kind of soft porn type of film between the two of them, and, and they put it on some other video channel. I didn't, I didn't go watch it. didn't taint my view of him at all. I mean, I think he's just, he was using that kind of thing to get people's attention to be shocking. But still, neither one of them seemed to understand what was happening, or they don't. I did, but I, there's nothing I could say. I just watched from a distance like other people. And like I say, there's an answer to prayer that he's working in an independent film. And I'm hoping that that can be parlayed into, you know, the, the thing about him is he's a great character actor. I saw one of his early, gosh, I saw him back in the late 60s or something. And uh, he was, you know, it was, it was amazing how many films he's been in. You know, major films with major stars, you know, but he's just one of those guys that, you you know, you see in the Western, you see here, you see there, what you might call a character actor, but someone that's always working because he's always, he is, has that rare ability um, to just become whatever, you know, the director or whatever the script calls for, and he just gets into it. And, and he, you know, did a little bit of that on video during his time in exile, but he's what you would call a classic example of being soft-killed. The reason he's not dead is because he went public and stayed public, very important, stayed public, you know, and uh, he went through it that time in the wilderness, that time gone. He didn't go far enough to be ultimately soft-killed forever. There is forgiveness because he didn't go to Jesus, if you will. He didn't go that next step. Therefore, there's still a door open. But... I would urge caution about going through any doors like that. Of course, he's probably burned with the star whacking thing. I don't think he wants to cozy up with anybody in Hollywood. But the doors open in the sense that he 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 can work without the film, let's say that's being done right now, being uh, how might I put it, blackballed because of him, blackballed because of him. And the reason people get soft killed, and the reason that because uh, there was plenty of demand, um, for example, for me and on uh, script doctoring, all kinds of stuff that I, w that I did, you know, as work. But they couldn't afford, you know what I mean? They, they, I did provide effects. Uh, some things I was doing on the Zeph Report got used in some films, actually. Um, some effects and stuff that I, was, that I was putting together sonically at that time. But, I mean, at that point, the, the, you know, the door, even to the schlock stuff, was shut and locked. And that was it. I'm, I'm a bad person, and uh, I will never be allowed to work again. And that has been the policy for the last 15 years. So, um, no, I don't expect forgiveness. I don't expect, um, you know, that I'll ever be, uh, as I said, forgiven, or you know, or you know, that's, or uh, or have opportunity or anything like that as I had worked very hard for when I was there. But I don't expect that will be coming my way uh, at this point. It's been, when it, with me, it was permanent. A permanent soft kill. Really just, you know, a permanent erasing from the record. And there's a lot of people like that who have, you know, obviously gone through that very same thing. And... Um, you know, I don't have any regrets, really. But, you know, the thing is, is it's, it's very harsh. When you look back on the world, you know, I, and the world to me would be, say, um, you know, Los Angeles and, you know, what I was doing. Um, there's a hatred. It's not the kind of hatred that's... Um, it's more of a hatred like I hate the world. It's the kind of hatred Jesus talked about when he said, unless you hate the world... 
you can't be my disciple. It's, 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 it's more generalized than specific. I don't look at, like, for example, Randy Quaid was blaming Rupert Murdoch, for example, as who ruined his career. It wasn't Rupert Murdoch. It's just the system that he bucked up against, and the system crushed him. And he won't ever be back full strength. He'll be allowed to work on the periphery. But if you go all the way to the spiritual side, you realize that, you know, okay, pedophiles run the world, all that kind of stuff, uh, the door shuts uh, forever. And um, so then that, then when you view, you know, things that you like, you used to be a fan of this or that, or this artist or that, there tends to be a disconnect because obviously they can't relate to what, what you've been through. They're also participating in the system. And why are they allowed to? It's because they're dishonest or they're playing a game or something. So the respect sort of flies out the window. And that schism or that split, it's not my fault. Uh, one should never blame the people who were soft-killed for the schism. The schism exists in the system itself that shuns people that come to truth, that kills people that might get near to it, and has no remorse whatsoever about it. The system and the world is evil, I don't think the people that uh, are soft-killed for telling the truth or for coming forward or for trying to figure it out, and in my case, it was more like just trying to figure it out. For that, there's a punishment. And so that forever taints my view. And that's, you know, so um, it's, it's just the way it is. You know, there's, there, there will never be a respite. It's, it's not unfair in the sense that you know, it's just uh, my wilderness experience goes on indefinitely. And if there is a promised land that, I, that I'm looking for, it must be after death. However, had I not done what I did, I wouldn't be here. I would be hard killed, hard killed for having the truth and then not, you know, then not going public with it. And then that, that's how people do get killed. And so you see, so there is the rub. That's my bane of my existence. And there's nothing I can do. You know, I can produce all kinds of beautiful works and, and all kinds of uh, content and things and speak eloquently and do all those things. It doesn't matter. The, the die is cast. The fate is sealed. And um, so that's why when, you know, when I see people trying to form collectives outside the system, I just stay away. Because I see the same pattern repeating, <laughs> you know, the same thing. It starts becoming a club, a system, a, uh, there's rules. And, and even just when people casually get together, I start seeing all kinds of, well, we accept this, but we don't accept that. Now, what's my view of it? Well, my view of it is um, I'm still a creative person. I'm still someone that belongs to the arts. I'm still, you know, and letters. Uh, I will always be that. Um, could, could, you know, the, to a certain extent, okay, take a guy like, like Roger Stone. Now he's not, didn't have a come to Jesus moment. He's, he's, you know, he's very secular. Um, but in a sense, he's, he's kind of banned from the New York times thing. He had to independently publish the books he publishes and he does get sales from them. He still, he has a viable thing going on there, but, um, He's not going to be let back in. I don't know. He's got a movie, too, and all that. I guess he's not a good example. He's not really a soft-killed person. Uh, you know, we'll see what happens in the future. But, but you know, soft-killed is really being blackballed by the system, and, and so it's a spiritual thing. You know, it has to do with Christ. Notice that the people that are just telling the truth about one thing or another, they're not blackballed all the way, Right? Because they haven't done the Jesus, played the Jesus card, which Jesus requires that we do, that we be public, that we be, you know, open about our faith, or we risk denying him, and that's a fate I don't want to suffer. So, yes, it's, a, it's, a, it's an issue. It's, it, it goes in degrees. You can be soft-killed but still work, and that as long as you don't bring Jesus and all that into it, you're, you're fine there. Once it gets to the spiritual side of everything and once the, 
the real stuff starts getting exposed. Satanic ritual, satanic ritual abuse, traffic of children, uh, you know, pedo murder, the people in Washington running uh, the world of human trafficking, wars, weapons, drugs, uh, the same age-old, age-old stuff that they've been doing from the beginning of time. Uh, once you start opening that up, then, uh, then that's it. You're persona non grata. So the people that are not persona non grata are... Right? They're in the system. And the system is a prison. And people need to get out. And when people are in the system like that, and, and many are, I mean, you know, like, like uh, you know, you look at politics, people say, well, Trump, well, yeah, Trump's in the system. I mean, they're all in the system. He's, he's coming out by and by, but, you know, the Lord has him there, and he's, he's definitely blackballed. He's definitely ruined his business and ruined his, you know, he's, he's got a lot of skin in the game. I admire him greatly. Uh, but as far as I know, he knows all about the spiritual battle, and that's another reason, because he's going after the satanic Articles, and that's why there there's this big war brewing. Can he ever go back? He's a good example here. Can he ever go back to say civilian life and just uh, having more buildings and you know you know golf courses or whatever he has, you know whatever he's whatever he builds? Can he go back to being a builder in good stead? I I don't know. Everyone's life is different. It's harsher for those who God leans on more. You know, the person God chooses the most to be doing the things of the Lord. Gonna, the world's going to be harder on them in terms of, you know, viability, right? Uh, to, to the extent that you're less uh, effective or whatever, the, you know, uh, obviously um, it goes by degrees as to how soft-killed you are. You know, uh, the, the worst thing that one could do, you obviously see the, 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 the hatred toward Jesus, even publicly with, you know, with, with, with some of the old uh, Kathy Griffin video of her, you know, um, slamming Jesus as she wins an award. Why would she do that? If Jesus isn't even being talked about much in Hollywood, why would she have to come forth and say something like that? Because Jesus is the ground central. Yeshua, the one, Jesus, ground central. That's the, 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 the quintessential battlefield of the ultimate war. And for the war for what? Your soul. Your soul. And so rather than, you know, um, be personally angry, say, with... with uh, you know, in my case, I guess it could be Hollywood or this and that. I mean, I did write my book, Glass Backwards, which pretty much summed up how I felt about the whole thing. I, I like to make a mockery of things. So I'd like to do satire when I have anger, as I've done. You know, I like to mock. I love to mock, and they hate, they hate mocking. They hate that kind of humor, and I just love to do it. So that's, we have that. And I think more and more people, actually, it's very interesting, more and more people are getting on one side of this line or the other. It's almost like God is dividing this whole thing so that everyone with Jesus is soft-killed, but accepted and beloved in the body of Christ, right? But here's what happens. There's a whole Christian civilization in the system. And if you start telling the truth in any of these institutions, you will be as we were, Trish and I were banished we were blackballed there too. So we were not allowed, not only were we not allowed to work, both of us, but we were not allowed to worship collectively. We were actually barred, blackballed by the, the various evangelical churches in, in Los Angeles at that time. We were hungry for worship and fellowship, and, and needing some answers. And uh, we were shut out in the rain. The, the door was slammed, and we were told to go away. Go get help, whatever. And, of course, for people that have been in this situation, there is no help out there. All there is is controllers wanting to control you. There's no help. There's no one you can go to. 
There's no no religion, a religious leader, no guru, no no special person. You're smack dab alone, and there's nothing you can do about it. So you know we the the only thing that you know couple of couple of points on this. One thing you have to understand is this is it for life. So you you know you you for whatever reason you wound up on death row. You know so okay so that's why I used the prison analogy yesterday. So you wound up there. Okay so number one is to accept and even be grateful for the fact that God took you. Oh the coyotes are going mad. They sound like ravaging murderers out there tonight. Settle down, you guys. It's, let them rant and rave. I was going to go out there to see if I could give you some sound. I was working in the, the studio on a thing, and um, something very, very different, something very, very uh, traditional and sweet. Uh, there's just no end to how I surprise myself of the things that I wind up being um, captured by, you know, to do. It's, it's kind of like an inspiration. You get captured by, by a vision, by a thing, and then you do it. It might be something silly, compared to like, you know, but with me, it's like, it tends to go all over every kind of genre and every kind of, you know, whatever. It's, it's a delightful. It's not the kind of thing that um, you do when you're locked in a system. You're stuck in your, your character, whatever you're supposed to be doing, you know, your role. So that's a freedom that you get that uh, people don't have. But at the same time, you have no, no viability toward, toward commerce because that, that, that road has been blocked. And so you have to find all other alternative ways of, you know, and there may not be one. But one thing is for sure. Every single person that follows the Lord goes through this trial by fire, either now, you know, either early on or at some point in their lives where there's a disconnect from, you know, family, friends, the system in general. You, you can't, you know, unless you hate the world, really, you cannot be a disciple of Christ. It's just, it's, it's just a, um, people have tried to be a friend of each, you know, a friend of the world, a friend of Jesus. It, it doesn't work. Look up uh, James 4.4. 4. Um, James actually, you know, brother of Jesus, he actually starts calling people adulterers, adulteresses, uh, you know, um, adulterers and adulteresses, ha- you know, uh, you know, don't you know that being friends of the world is being an enemy of God and vice versa? You know, he's, he's, he's basically saying that you're an adulterer if you're a friend of the world. Uh, don't think I came to being peace, Jesus said, but division to bring a sword. Okay, that's another, another thing from the Bible. And, um, you know, unless, unless, you know, my disciple hates his, you know, hates the, your mother, hates your father, hates the world, hates the situation, you, 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 without that hatred, you can't really be my disciple because, you know, you're not going to leave your estate. You're going to stay there, right? Unless you, uh, and, how, and how do you end up being anathema to the world? Well, the world rejects you. And then you automatically become, uh, you know, an antipathy to it, unaccepted by it. And people in the world, don't worry, they'll help you. They're very mean when you're, you know, in that position. And that will stir up your hate plenty good. And then you'll go with the Lord. See what I mean? It's a way of like breaking you. For, it's like breaking that habit. And then once that's done and you see how mean people are and you see how they... They don't care about you anymore like they did, or they th- you thought they did, but perhaps they didn't. And you're all on your own, and that's just tough, you know? And, and so then off you go. There's really nowhere to go, and so you go to the Lord. It's just like the Lord breaks your legs, right? He breaks us. He's like a little lamb that has legs broken so they don't wander off the cliff. So our legs are broken. Our spirit, our, our bodies are broken. I mean, our, 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 our position is broken, so that there's a de- only one default, and that's Jesus. And so that's how people stay there. As I've stayed there unflinchingly ever since the day that Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yah, took me, the Father. He took me one night and uh, when I was at the end of my rope and I was on the verge of getting killed ten ways to Sunday. <laughs> 
it was just the most, I mean, one day maybe I, I write some of this stuff up, but I don't think anyone would believe it. So, you know, just like the experience with the Lord, you know, being lifted up literally off the ground and things like that, you know, I don't think, you know what I mean? You, there's no church you could go to where they would think it, it was anything less than demonic. And yet, from that night forward, nothing has changed. From that moment, right, because by then I was so broken that I was even beyond suicide. Suicide was, I, I was, couldn't even do that. I was completely devastated. And then the Lord, I cried out to the Lord. He took me. And he told me all kinds of things about my life. And about, I knew it had to be the Lord because he just knew everything about everything. I know they say the demonic realm knows everything, but I mean, this has been my Lord from the beginning. And um, I never looked back. I never... I never sought anything else. Uh, I was immediately rejected by the Christian uh, right after that is when I tried to, when I was rejected by the church because I tried to fellowship. I did what people do. You try to find, you know, fellowship and things like that. That was denied. We were cast out. And so off we went, you know, and then we sort of just drove away from LA and just drove toward the center of the country, wound up in New Mexico, I guess. And uh, just had to go from there, you know, had to kind of pick up and realize there's no friend in the church. There's no friend in, uh, you know, contacting my old contacts that used to hire me, like producer Mike. He would, he'd always hire me and pay me to write and rewrite people's scripts. Uh, couldn't do that because, you know, maybe I could maybe do it as anonymously, but... It was like he didn't even want the, you know what I mean? It says at that point, it's like you have to, you just have to accept your situation. You, there's nobody you can call. You can't go back. You're not going to be able to go and work. You're, you're soft killed. You know, you have a new life where you're just reborn, right? So it's really a birth. You're killed in one sense, but you're born in another. And in my case, it was so stark, so much of a black and white thing. There was really, um, you know, no going back. And, and primarily the main thing, it was the Zephyr report talking about Satanism, satanic ritual abuse, and, and, and coming forth with my own abuse issues. And then not realizing at the time in 2002 how completely, not only widespread, but how what I'm really describing is the actual system that has now at long last come front and center, which actually caused the whole Russia Gate thing as a means of covering it up, you know, but, but that kind of thing that you talk about, that's, you know, that's kind of the end of it because, you know, I mean, you couldn't, well, what are you going to do at that point? Right. I mean, there's, you're, you have no, no, there's no opportunity then because you've crossed a certain line, right? When you cross a line with the churches, the same thing happens when you tell the truth. Uh, they blackball you. And then there's really no church after that you can go to because they contact each other. They talk to each other on the phone and things like that. And so they know who you are, you know? So they... It's just too bad, you know? I mean, you can lament about it and you can be upset. I mean, they then feel they have license to mock you, and they do. And this is why I read Jeremiah 20, because I wanted you to see... Uh, before I spoke about it personally, I wanted you to see what happened to Jeremiah. How he cursed his mother's womb. How he couldn't take the mocking every day. How he couldn't take the derision and the, and the separation. And, you know, when he, he meant no one any harm, he didn't do anything wrong. He was doing the works that God gave him to do. And uh, you see the result. Uh, likewise, we didn't do anything wrong. We did nothing wrong with the churches. We did nothing. We did nothing wrong. You know, nothing wrong. And uh, the Zeph report is nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with writing the book Lamb. And there's nothing wrong with going on, uh, you know, other people's radio stations and t uh, talking my testimony until it got to a point where that testimony was blocked and unwelcome. I guess the nexus point was a, ho a Hollywood thing called Buzzsaw with Sean Stone. And then I realized, oh, you see, that soft kill order, that that's, that's it, stays in place. And that's why he told me, if you ever want to tell your story, you have to hook up with somebody that's in the system. Or because you're, you know, otherwise it, it would never get published. You know what I mean? It's, it's soft kill. 
You don't have any viability. It's very, 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 very important to keep this in mind. We must keep this in mind, folks, because when you're going to be judging someone and criticizing them or whatever you're going to do, you know, try to bear in mind that um, this reality I'm talking about, impinging on a person's life, you know, uh, because, I mean, I criticize myself all the time. Why couldn't you do this? Why couldn't you do that? You, you know what I mean? It's, and the, re- the answer is because the door is shut, because it's, it is what it is. If someone else wanted to criticize me for, on that basis, I just have to say, well, there's nothing, you know, this is a real thing. These are, this situation really exists as I've described it uh, without embellishment. And there's just nothing anybody can do about it. It's just too bad. You know, I mean, I, I've always been a hard worker, so I, would, I, I love the challenge of doing any of these projects people have. But I mean, there's no, there's no, it's, it's like we're in two different universes. There just isn't any way. You know, it's not that I don't like their works or their TV shows or their movies or whatever, but less and less do they really speak to me because I'm in this situation and they're not. And that makes a gulf between us. As far as east is from west, that twain shall never meet. So we tend to look for others like ourselves to communicate with and receive from. Because even casual conversation with people in that system versus the, 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 the blackballed, or if you will, the, okay, there's never going to be a conversation. There's going to be um, small talk or deception talk. I've had a lot of times where like not, 85% of the time um, they would be playing double entendres with me, trying to, try to trigger me and trying to, try to hurt me. And I'm like, okay, so I'm not allowed to talk to people either. That's right. Because they frown on that. They don't want you to influence anyone. They certainly don't want um, their children and their friends and people they care about to wind up like you, right? So they're very wary because it's very easy to misstep and then that's it. You're out. In my case, there was no misstep. I was at the end of my rope. I mean, dead anyway. So I just jumped in with the Lord because I had, you know, I had nowhere else to go. Now I realize how blessed I really was. From the Lord's perspective, from the world's perspective, I was totally effed. (laughs) But from the Lord's perspective, I'm totally blessed. When I say never the twain shall meet, you can't be a friend of the world. You can't be in the system and in the Lord. People get so mad at me when I say that. They get so angry. Because they themselves are not quite free is why they get angry. I had no choice. It was either that or die. So I took, you know, I took my chances and I I just did what the Lord said, went on to with forming the Zeph report. Because, you know, it was like that was the only way I had to live to actually survive. Without that Zeph report, yours truly would never be here today. That thing kept me alive. Literally verified by people that work for the NSA, et cetera, that I'm not going to go into that. But I mean, yeah, I was, you know, I'm like, well, how, you know, and then back then it was just so horrifying because, you know, they were trying to recruit me kind of into the, you know, to this group of radio people and that group. And then, you know, that, that would it look like I wasn't going to play ball, you know, with the, there's an alternative system <laughs> I didn't realize of broadcasters and they're all Christians. And they're trying to get me to play ball with them. And I'm I like, you know, like, like the system, like a repeat of the system, you know, same thing. And I didn't even know it. I, I, by that time, I was so traumatized by it all that I, 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 I guess I upset them. I didn't mean to. I'm not, I, you know, but they pointed out that I, I am a pariah. I said, you mean just sitting here? <laughs> just. And um, then, of course, the, 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 the honcho started slandering me by calling me a Satanist and, 
and all that when, when really what they're doing is blackballing me and that's what they did where they wouldn't even mention my name. They were as bad as Hollywood. You know, I mean, I, I'd not be hard to see who could compete for it, but they were the same, I'll put it that way. So that's called being soft killed, right? Because you, don't, you, don't, you can't get advertisers. And there are people out there talking about all this stuff today, not getting blackballed, you know, for the first time. But the people that that happened to before, it, there's still no forgiveness. You have to understand that. There is no forgiveness. You know, you did something that is so egregious that you can never be forgiven by the world. You, you went, you know, you talked about the, you know, the, the perverted nature of it all, but then you went on to uh, draw the entire world, the entire universe, how it all breaks down, how the whole thing works. And that we cannot have. That's you know, relegated to you know, secret societies and things like that. That's not what you're supposed to be doing, talking out of school like that. What if everybody got onto it and everyone decided to rebel at the same time? Well, then the system would collapse, folks. Satan's system would collapse because Satan owns Hollywood. He owns everything. So you got to be vetted that way. So therefore, the Christians involved in that system aren't the real deal, obviously. I say about in the beginning, I thought, well, let's listen to Christian music, you know, because I was, I was listening to a lot of, I, I listened to very diverse, um, everything from classical to uh, just whatever. I just have, I, had a, I listened to a lot of like, what is it, ambient experimental film music, just a lot really strange stuff, but stuff that you could, that really I liked, you know. But I was, you know, consuming uh, uh, commercial material, you know, at that time. That was before I was soft killed. And so I had a big collection and uh, a great stereo system. And I used to just, you know, my music would just keep me going. Uh, but I, I tended to shy away from the commercial stuff only because the, something made me feel very uncomfortable. You know, and then I later identified what that was. And so it tended, there was kind of like all of a sudden it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it's like I could see through it and I could see what the lyrics meant and all that. And I was like, you know, not every song, but, you know, quite a few. It, you, it, 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 but then you realize it's a systemic thing. It's, it's the attempt to mind control the population to tell them how, you know, nod, wink, it's really great, isn't it? You know, it's great on the other side, right? So there's that whole promotion that's going on. It's also mind control and propaganda. And so I saw that, yeah, if artists don't actually conform to that and, and dance to that tune, they're out too. You know, everyone's out. Me as an artist, I was kicked out for going to that distance. And so I, I want to really make sure people understand the, these are the stakes of the game, okay? Uh, I didn't know that. I Look, in my case, default. It was, I, I had to live. I have no regrets because I, I had no other choice. I was already broken down. They'd already stripped me of everything. They, 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 they you know, had stripped me of the career. I was messed up. I was strung out. I was every horrible thing you could be done by my friends, all, all people working in Hollywood, you know, you know producers, uh, people that are su very successful, to, you know, bringing me down all the way to, you know, witchcraft, everything, you name it, is being thrown at, 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 at us because we weren't exactly playing ball, but, you know, I was so traumatized from the past, I didn't even realize what they were talking about at the time. I was still in denial, something I well knew, but then I, you know, I couldn't handle it. I admit I, I have a week, I guess. I couldn't handle it. So they, you know, so we had just really handlers and controllers were our friends. And then the whole idea was to get us across that line, right? So the way they do it is to break you down until you finally scream or, you know, and you either die literally or die figuratively and become one of them. It's, you know, the, 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 they break you down. They, the same thing as what the Lord did. The Lord breaks you too. Each one breaks you, you know, so you're so broken down and then the Lord took me, you know, it's just like at the, at the very height of that breaking, you know, and it looked like it was going to be, you know, obviously uh, death at the very height of the breaking of all these, you know, good people, these good citizens of the world, people that you would look at and say, what's wrong with them, Z? They seem fine to me. 
What's wrong with you? <laughs> I got that a lot. It, it always comes back to it's my fault. You know what I mean? It's my fault. And um, you're the one that's not getting along. You're the one that's not being a mensch here. You're the one that needs to be more humble, you know, and, and be, uh, you're the one that's, uh, you know, not really cooperating. You're the one that's actually causing us to have to do all this abuse. You know, if you would just stop what you're doing, we wouldn't have to abuse you. And, you know, take our masks off, we could be friends. But no, you, may, you made it, so we have to have a war. That's what I, that's scapegoating, okay? That's bullying, one-on-one. And they'll, you know, so Jesus is so powerful. And, you know, that what happens is these people all break away from you. They get, they get broken off of you by the Lord. Because if the Lord doesn't separate you from them, they will freaking kill you. You know what I mean? What they're really trying to do is drive you to suicide. And inherent in all this is, this is all gang stalking. So in this parenthesis here, it's all gang stalking. And it all goes to the spiritual battle. It all goes to this, this line between light and dark that I'm just describing. Between soft-killed and viable. There's that line. And it is more solid and more real than anything else. And if you don't have that in mind, if you don't know the truth about this, you're going to suffer very, very much, much more. And you'll make mistakes because you'll commiserate with people that mean you harm. And, and you're going to think they mean you good because you've lost your awareness of this situation. I'm happy that I survived, even though, you know, the, the, the pain of it is, is uh, you know, it's, it, the, the reason it's bearable is because of Jesus. It's because of, of the disciples having gone through this same thing. It's because, um, you know, that's, that's the, the price. That's the price of following Jesus. The price of discipleship is the shunning. And these Christians would get so mad at me. You know, they, like I, I said one nice thing about somebody. It was not Budge, but it was some some commentator on in the Bible and stuff. I think it was Spurgeon. I said something nice about Spurgeon. Go, oh, you said something nice about Spurgeon. He's, he's in the system. How dare you criticize these people? I'm like, hey, buddy, I'm just trying to survive, and I'm just saying what I see. And no, I don't take it back, okay? If I got something nice out of something that someone in the system said or wrote or did or performed or whatever, Fine. And and they just he just kept dog they just they it was like a team of people kept just dogging me and dogging me and dogging me on this thing on this point and and trying to handle me and control me and change me and I just said well the system's this and then Jesus is that you know what's the big deal why are you so mad at me. I mean, even if I wasn't here, you'd still have the same problem. You'd still, well, you got to go around to everybody that says the emperor is naked or says the truth and beat them down? Is that what you're going to do in the name of Jesus? Beat them down because they, uh, they're not going to give a pass to uh, people in the system? I give them a pass being a fellow human being. I mean, I... I care about them. Look at Randy Quaid never really left the system. Only Jesus can actually bust you out. You can't, you're not allowed to leave unless you get paid for by the blood of Jesus. That's a legal, that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a truth that every single person in the sound of my voice should have that on their heart and understand that. Because it's a very important legal point about who you really are. And, you know, if you've studied any of like Jordan Maxwell's talks about you know, uh, you know, the, the, you're really a Q-SIP number. You're really a commodity, and you know all that kind of stuff about what kind of slave you're born into. He's he's right. That he's he's that's not fiction. That's really literally correct. Your legal status is a commodity owned by somebody else, a slave. And but the blood of Jesus pays for that and sets you free. And it's interesting. The people that have received that the least are the Christians. 
because they're they have. Uh, so let me just go on with my story because then uh, then you'll understand more. Uh, so we, you know, so I kind of got rid of, you know, uh, had this great experience, and then you know tried to go to this church. We started getting rid of all these artworks that were kind of new agey and satanic and awful because I was really a big art collector and. Uh, Trish and I both painted as well. So we were really into that. I had to get rid of all of it. Tibetan masks. I mean, you know, Balinese masks and everything. Oh, they're all demonic. Okay. And I just like, like, I just did whatever they told me to do, you know. And eventually we had this blowing up. But they wanted to come over to the house and take all our artworks away and they wanted to, you know what I mean? This was being a Christian. I thought, well, I want to be true to Jesus. I want to do the right thing. And uh, it all turned out to be just exterior stuff. And people were saying, well, you still have things. I have very little uh, that's of the um, artwork of the past. I don't really miss it. It didn't really bother me that it was gone. It's just that it was... You know, the people that try to, you know, get me to clean up my act or whatever, they're completely evil. <laughs> you know, getting rid of the artworks was a means of control. So we went and bought a bunch of Christian CDs so we wouldn't be listening to. I would. I had a big mango tree Buddha and I'd burn incense to the Buddha. I had the speakers on each side of it. I, would, I didn't worship anything. I, would, I wasn't even into meditation. I just liked it, you know. I have symbols from all over the world. I had been a student of comparative religion. That was taken away. So this was real brainwashing. This is real hardcore MK Ultra stuff that the churches do, right? So hardcore, real hardcore, you know, with a threat of, you know, killing you if you don't comply. Oh, yeah, don't even be safe, people. Take it to heart, you know, not be paranoid, but be safe, be cautious, understand there's dangers out there, right? And the church is a big institution, that's a danger. If you're a lamb, that's a danger. You, 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 that's just, you'd be, be safer in a brothel than you would in a church at that point. Sorry. <laughs> you'd be better off in a, in a bar at the heart of Mexico. You know, in dusty old Mexico, down at, uh, you know, down, I don't know, in, in one of these, uh, these towns where there's a lot of tough hombres in there, right? You'd be safer in there. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, that's the truth. You know, you laugh because it's, because you know it's true. And, um, you know, so we got all these CDs, you know, these various bands, and we just started uh, trying to addict ourselves because we were real music addicts. We, you know, I was really into it. And I, I was also playing drums at the time. It was so funny. Um, you know, I just couldn't get anything going with people because I had these great guitar players and great people I could play with. And I was a very good drummer, you know what I mean, in my, my, my youth. Um, I'm good now in the studio, but that doesn't count because I can keep punching in and overdubbing and stuff. It's not really the same as being just on it, right? But I had, uh, I just wanted to play, you know? And I also play piano and whatever. I just, you know, and, and we had some jams and some stuff, but nothing ever really kind of got going because there was this wall between us, right? It became an excuse to, to push us down, an excuse to try to get control to move us over the line. Right. So whether it be band practice or whether it be, you know, um, script writing, you know what I mean? A couple of these things where I got paid, I, I had the feeling that it wasn't about me. It wasn't about getting the screenplay produced or fixing it up. It was about getting control. You know what I mean? Say, well, we'll pay you. OK, fine. Here I am. And uh, then it became about something else. And I always came down to this 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 war right between two people on each side of a line. And then it became dangerous and spooky and demonic and weird and gang stalking and phones ringing and, and weird things of signals and people flashing lights and weird cars driving by. You, you know the drill, right? Very, very heavy, awful, supernatural, sickening and frightening, terrifying stuff. Uh, 
Uh, so he bought all these records, you know, CDs and stuff at that time, and, and it was about uh, tried to listen to all this uh, Christian music, you know. And then eventually, along the way, I met some producers in the uh, Christian who have had, you know, like hit records, and I didn't think much of it because. At that time, it was like a Christian. I didn't know much about it. You know, I didn't listen to Christian radio, so I, I didn't know what they were talking about. They had this whole thing, and then I started listening to their radio stations and and here listening for the artists they produce. And and it was like this whole alternative world, but it was the same system. And then finally, I had someone confess to me, this is a guy who's, won, I don't know, the, the Dove Awards, is that what you win? Well, you know, one of these people that's, you know, a veteran and all this. And he just... You know, he says, yeah. He goes, yeah. Uh, um, they're all sold out the same way. It's, it's no different than, it's, it's the same. It's, there's virtually no difference. And my heart sunk. I, I was like, really? Because I needed there to be a, a safe place. You know, I needed there to be like, okay, I can listen to this kind of music then. And a lot of these artists, he, you know, the guy was telling me, he goes, look, a lot of these artists are just, they want to go mainstream, but they start Christian to get, you know, something built up there with the idea of crossing over. And, you know, it's just the same game. It's the same producers. It's the same engineers working on the record. It's the same people in Nashville. It's the same people in LA. It's, a, you know, you know, and it's like, it was a big wake up call to me because I thought i for a while there, you know, I thought. Maybe there's this other world that I'd be welcome in and I could just uh, go to this, you know, get rid of the, the masks and the, you know, the artworks and the, the paintings and things. And, uh, you know, because I always loved horror, right? So I had the most horrific stuff on my walls. Not, no, not like Podesta, but no, nothing with children, nothing like that. No, nothing, nothing. No, that's really bad. That's, those people should be in jail, but they're lauded. They're the top of the food chain here. They're the, the most powerful. They're, Beyond Trump's reach, beyond the Attorney General, they're they're gods, folks. They're gods. They're like gods. But anyway, uh, so then, you know, I even brought some of these CDs to uh, Santa Fe, you know, and kind of rented a place and tried to make a go of it there. But we you know eventually got evicted. But one of the problems is we play that music too loud, so we were playing this music. <laughs> I had started the Zephyr Report podcast at that time, but I really did believe, you know, we still believe that, you know, that we'd hear some really good stuff and, you know, and, and hear some really spirit. We had a lot of really interesting music at that time. And then slowly, one by one, the heroes fell as we found out who the producers were and who the thing was, what the circumstances are. And then it was like, oh, eventually I developed a certain sense where I could sense, if I heard like something like Amazing Grace, that if it was done in one of those, I could feel it. You, know, you get to that point even. But, oh, that was such a dark f funerary day for me. It was like a funeral. I had to, my heart was so broken, you know, to think that these, that at long last, I thought I'd found my fam, you know. <laughs> turned out it was the same devil, the same thing that drove me to complete crazy, just awful, horrible existence in L.A. The same devil, the same horrible thing is in the Christian music. You know, the same game, the same stalking, the same everything. And, and so I turned from all that. It got to the point where I would hear someone do a Christian a song would come on the radio or something. I'd, I'd slam it off. Get that out of here. That's worse. I'd rather hear Jumping Jack Flash or something than some awful thing like Amazing Grace. Even I don't care what the lyrics mean. You know what I mean? I was just devastated. And I didn't mean that. I don't like, I'm not, a, I'm not a fan of the Rolling Stones or anything, but other than that, you know, it's good rock and roll, background music, whatever. Used to be a fan. I used to be a fan of a lot of people, but my heart was broken every time there too. Especially when the mocking, the stalking, the murder attempts, you know, I realized they'd kill me. 
So I, brokenhearted, turned away from people who hate me. I had to realize it's not a personal hate, but it's there. Do you want to be a part of someone that hates you, consume something where there's hatred toward you in that exchange? Do you, do you want to continue doing that? And no, I didn't. I, I didn't know what to do. I could keep playing a game and saying everything is fine. And of course, all the cultural icons I had, you know, this is probably more of a, you know, back in the, in the day, the 80s and 90s, I was really more of a movie fan at that time. And then one by one, my heart was broken there too. Until finally, they just said, look, you know, make it easier on yourself. Just, you know, what's wrong with these people? I mean, do, do, you, do you hate them so much that you wouldn't join them, you know? And so there was that. That aspect, well, maybe if you can't beat him, join him, right? But then God has a funny way that if he wants you, he won't let you join them. You can go try and do all kinds of, jump through all kinds of hoops and things. Something always just is amiss. It just doesn't quite connect. And then later on, you're on your knees and you're weeping before the Lord. And you go, oh my God, Lord, I, if it wasn't for you, I'd, just, I, I'd be dead. I'd be ruined. I'd be... But this is so tough because, you know, everybody likes Disneyland, right? Everyone likes, you know, to go to the, to the show. Everyone wants to go to Disneyland. You know, every thing that's a big achievement if you do a sculpture, if you do a, you know, you do a, you, you do a movie, you do a, you do a, uh, some kind of art form or whatever in, in life, you know, and, and everyone worships those things, you know, and so you too are worshipped. Everyone wants that kind of thing to make up for the broken life or rejection by their parents or their abuse issues, they all want to kind of make good so they can heal that that's, that's broken. So they're, you know, they're looking for that shortcut. They're looking for any way in that they can. Finally, they realize the only way I can get into this thing is I got to, I got to bow down. I got to submit. Got to find that, you know, it's, it's the most powerful person I can to just be their slave, you know what I mean? And as a means, and then I got to go past them, you know, there's, there's a strategy so that all the belovedness that comes is all fake, you see. It's not real love. Plus, the world doesn't love you. You know, the world loves the image of you, but the minute that image is tarnished, the world is the fastest, the fastest one to flush you down the toilet. Once you, there's one misstep, that's it, you're out. No love there. I need an enduring love. I need someone to love me for real. Not fake, not based on what I did yesterday or based on what I might do tomorrow, but just based on me. And the only place that's available is the living God. That's the only love there is in this world, and I guarantee it. Guaranteed truth. That's the only love in this world that is genuine and that nurtures and feeds and guides and, and solves. Another line in the Bible that I like, another verse, it's like, you know, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them, expose them. At the same time, the Bible says it's, it's uh, you know, it's a sin to even talk about those things they do in secret. Uh, well, we can allude to them. I don't like to talk about them too specifically either, but we need to know they're there. And we need to understand that nodding and winking in favor of joining up means consent to child trafficking and murder and, you know, cannibalism and all that rest of it. That's really what you're signing on to. I mean, it, it's not what you see. They'll never tell you that. But, I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, it is what it is. You know what I mean? There's, and, and, and they've all done it. And they're saying, well, we're waiting for you. You know, and then, look, peaches and cream are right on the other side. All you got to do is kill yourself, like in the game. You have to jump off that building in, in a fit of suicide, and then you're saved at that very moment. And then peaches and cream and all the pudding, champagne and all that's just waiting on the other, just on the other side. The whole party of all these people waiting to see you, waiting to love you. 
And they did that very well in that movie. And of course, <laughs> it's really more of a funeral, isn't it, than a party? It's really a, a commemoration of who you used to be before your soul got scalped. And so it's a very sad situation. Now, the only thing that I can think of is you, 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 you embrace the truth and then you do the best you can. That's what we've had to do. The best we could. And then, you know, the world judges us harshly, like, you know, we're losers or whatever it is. But... Again, it's like the like a, a line from the, the book, The Great Gatsby, you know, never judge another person, you know, because you don't know really what their circumstances are. You know, it's a, you don't know what, what they're dealing with. They've got their own war with hell, you know, the, the hounds of hell going, and uh, probably most people don't even know that they have that. So it's easy to criticize, you know, like you could have done this, you could have done that, no. No, I couldn't have. The doors are shut. Now, I don't have to hate on them on the other side. I don't hate, I don't hate them. I, I mean, I kind of hated them when they, well, when they would do stuff like mocking and, you know, gaslighting and things like that. I, you know, I felt very damaged from it, very traumatized. You know, I, well, I still have PTSD from it. I mean, PTSD meaning there's a, del means a delay. Like, so, for example, they do something that hurts you very deeply, right? They set up that, that, that carry moment with the pig's blood or whatever. Like, it's all going to be okay now. You're going to be, you know, we, we welcome you. And then they pull the pig's blood, right? Oh, they love that game. I, I, we could call that the pig's blood game. They love that pig's blood game. They play that over and over and over and over. And everybody, I've, I, I know a ton of people have been through that from just different... You know, where it's like, oh, your troubles are going to be over. You're viable again. Hey, you can work again. Come on in. And then the betrayal. And then they go, ha, 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 sucker. You know what I mean? And then you, you, the, the whole idea there is for you to commit suicide. When, when they get to that point, you're supposed to kill yourself. Right? When they shame you and humiliate you to that level, you know, and throw God knows how many whammies at you to get you to... Be humiliated and be unlucky and be, you know, ugly or obese or whatever they throw at you, you know, to, to hurt you and push you down. Remember, that's going on, too, at the same time. And if you're like my brother, you didn't even know why it was happening. You know, you just all you try to do is, you know, be uh, somebody, go to the church, participate. You, didn't, you don't know why they were setting up these games of bullying and things. You just, you didn't understand the system. All you knew was you were just trying to, you know, have your job, make your contribution, go to work like everybody else, and uh, then you run into this. Phantasmagorical stuff, too. I mean, stuff that even fiction writers wouldn't even come up with. Uh, the, so many weird things that happened in, in those scenarios. And then they say, you got about two seconds to change your mind because, look, it's miles and miles and miles of this. Is that what you want? Mocking, humiliation, being a laughing stock. Is that what you want? Because that's what you're going to get. That's your fault. It's not my fault. Even if I abuse you, it's not my fault. It's your fault. All right? It's your fault. You had a choice. Like there was this one, this one producer that wanted me to write something. And uh, oh, thank God I got out of that. Writing is... You talk about a solitary life. <laughs> solitary man. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, no, that was going through my mind. That, that, that Neil Diamond song from the... What was that, the late 60s? or Yeah, somewhere around there. And it just popped into my mind about... It could have been a voice to skull type of thing. You know, I wouldn't be surprised. But I've been working up a version of it. Like, yeah, I've been, you know, it's like I was compelled to do it. And I, I think maybe I might be under remote control. And you talk about something commercial, that's about as commercial as you could go. 
No, no, no. I have a I have a strategy to of doing it that's uh, that's very cool. You know, very cool, very very cool, very you know, and very easy on, on the ear. Very very nice, real nice dubby drums and some really cool. You know, complete different type of thing than the than rock and all that. But yeah, but uh, but th- there's another thing. Why would that come into my mind, and why would then I be compelled to do it? As some kind of something that I, I would look at bubblegum music like that and go, you know, Neil Diamond, obviously, that was to me was a joke, you know, um, not a joke, but, you know, it's just I wasn't in all that, bu- you know, that kind of I was into hardcore at that time, more hardcore stuff, you know, angry and, <laughs> you know, ugly and angry, not smooth voices and. But anyway, I guess it, you know, I don't know if it's remote control because I would have to see. But, I mean, one thing I did, I did learn something about the key of E minor that I didn't know. And how when it jumps to the G there, it goes to a major chord there. And it's like for a chorus, and that's like, wow, yeah, that was, that's very interesting. Because the song always reminded me of, and no, I'm not putting Neil Young down. I mean, obviously, a great artist, all that. I'm not, I'm not putting anybody down. And that could be in the system. But I, but I just, I looked at that. I said, it probably took him 10 minutes to write, you know. <laughs> and it just leaves a little kind of almost childlike chords, right? And, um, you know, I, and, and it, it, yet it had this depth to it. It, it. it just showed, again, how the best things are always simple, right? And, um, and, you know, and it had a depth to it, but it, the lyrics were about, like, Sue and Melinda and, you know, girls betraying, you know, having a relationship and being betrayed. So the guy's giving up on women and saying he's going to be a solitary man. That's that's the whole hook of it. That's the whole thing it's about. And it's very, I, you could see it in the, the way people talked in the 60s and, you know, but why it grabbed me like that, you know, and, and he, you know, it's just so bizarre because I never listened to it on the radio. I haven't heard it. I haven't been exposed to it. I probably heard it 30 years ago. And it's just this weird, it's like, am I getting senile? I wonder what, you know, what's going, why would I even be, why would I have to do it? Why not just have it in your head and just forget about it? Like the Navy, the Navy fight song. It's because of being an artist when something gets into your head. Or captures you in some way, or inspires you. You 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 tend to, you know, work on it. I don't. But I just see. It, I don't. I don't know. It's 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 a mystery, and I'm getting off my topic. Well, it's just funny how, in the midst of talking about all this stuff about, you know, the soft kill. You know, being you know being when the Zaff report started, that was the end of you know the door was shut on Hollywood. You know, in terms of he couldn't go back and do anything. You know, that was it. And even, you know, it gets worse, it's worse than that. Because I was gang stalked by the producer of a film, you know, we've gone through this. And they came out with a re release in, in right at that time. And then it used to be he would do interviews and say nice things about me. And then he started slamming me like I didn't have anything to do with it and say these awful lies, one lie after another, just terrible lies. So many lies. And it all started with the Zeph report started. Because they couldn't have that link back. You see what I mean? It was the same reason that I was kicked out. Yes, I was kicked out of a book recently. I was blackballed from uh, a book on horror films from the 80s. And they wanted they, they interviewed me about the, the, the we had an Invisible Man project that didn't get produced. Or wanted, you know, there was, there was, uh, the, 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 they wondered if I got fired or what happened there. And then they brought this other guy. I said, no, they had two different. I gave them a lot of inside baseball stuff about what happened back then. And uh, see these other films we were involved in, and the production company involved, and uh, but then I relayed this story about this that I've told you before, and um, really spooky stuff. But one thing that traumatized me that I never really discussed with anyone was when I, you know, he said the book was getting published, and I provided you know the the questions I had. And he wanted me to write them out because he's an Italian guy, English not his first language, but it was a book published in English by an American publisher. Anyway, not, not a vanity book, no, it was actually a real thing. And uh, you know, I say real, meaning, of course, vetted by Satan. <laughs> and um, I think we were friends on even on Facebook. And then the book came out and he made a big announcement. I went and looked all excited. Just remember, p- 
pig's blood, pig's blood, pig's blood. Okay, got it? I'm all excited, scrolling down to see our section, you know, because we, you know, we're part of something that is considered high art now for some reason. And so they're doing this big book on it. And I went down the index and and the, the, the films we're talking about and the, and the people involved were big people. I mean, they're some substantial people. Uh, not a word. I, I went back and rechecked. I thought, this, this was a big deal. You know what I mean? So what, what, you're talking about films and a couple of films that are still popular today from that period of time. And you can't say that about all the categories that he had there. These are films that c- came and went mostly. I'm talking about films that actually they came and they never went. They became cult hits. And so, you know, it would have been a real important chapter to have in the book. Plus, he also got interviews from several other people, not just me. I mean, I could go back and check again, but, you know, I, you know, I like to go into denial. I go, you know, you get hit and then you stand there because you don't, you can't process it. You were just hit in the face, right? So you stand there, let him hit you again and again. And you're, you're still trying to process, did that really happen or not? Well, that's, my, that's been my issue, you know what I mean? That's something I've, you know, Lord knows with that. I, you know, it's, it's uh, I guess, it, again, weakness. I don't know what you'd call that, where there's a delay, you know? So I went and looked and I, it wasn't there. And a lot of these other films were films you never heard of. You know what I mean? That, that, right? It, it was not the same with, with this particular uh, topic. Because you also had big writers like on that in, Invisible Band project that got scrapped for some reason because the company blew up or something. Uh, that's exactly what happened. I tried to describe that too. The partners got mad at each other. And so that project fell. But after we, I did one version. And then they had actually George R. R. Martin, the guy that... Uh, created Game of Thrones. He was like another writer. So that's a big deal. You know what I mean? So that that was excised out of the book too. Ugh. Anything that linked back to me had to be gone, even famous people. That's a lot of power, folks. Look, there's no other way to look at it. I've analyzed it and analyzed it and tried to be dispassionate and, and take it, it, it just is what it is. Even so, the soft kill wasn't enough. They also had to, as I said, um, black say bad things about me publicly and in interviews, so that the door was shut, and so there'd be no uh, no uh, sinew, no no connection. You see, it had to be done. He, you know, Brian, the producer, director, he, he had to do it. If I was him, I'd do the same thing, probably to make sure it never linked back. And even if you have to excise it out of a book, even if it was an important piece of history, you don't put it in the book because you can't afford for it to come back to the Zeph Report, you see. The Zeph Report's the ultimate pariah. In, in these, let's just put it back to, okay, this guy contacts me, this author. He's doing a, a book about the iconic, certain kind style of filmmaking that was going on in the 80s. Um, two of the films I was involved in became very famous as cult films. Okay, so uh, not just involved in, but I mean, you know, let me just put it this way. I'm being trashed publicly and nobody asked the question, well, if he was such a bad writer, why was he rehired for five more films? Right? And then you'd say, Obviously, there's something wrong with them. They don't go that far. They just, oh, he was, you know, it's just a, ma- a way of disconnect. Oh, he's gone somewhere. You don't, you know, and I'm really the one that really wrote it. I'm the one that really created it. I'm the one that really did everything. So talk to me. Talk to me. There's nothing over there. They're dead. He's dead, dead. You know, that separation, right? At the Zeph report. And the same thing with the, with the film he'd taken out of this book. Um, that section, I could go back and look. I mean, maybe I didn't see it right, you know. Maybe I just didn't find Maybe it was under another subheading and I didn't really. But I was all excited, like, you know, like Carrie going to the prom. 
And then I looked, and then I looked, and then I looked. And the only reason that would happen is to make sure there's a disconnect between the Zeph report and all the films these people did. Ah, the producer must be really pissed off at me. Really pissed off, like murderously so. Because that's, that's a lot of exposure that got flushed down the toilet because of me. Because of what I did. Because of the horrible thing I did. But to just take you out of a whole book and take all those other people out, all those other people did interviews, I mean, did they get taken out? Maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I'll go back and look. I, I, uh, I'll have to, I don't even know what the name of the book is. So it was going to serve also as a textbook in, in cinema classes and colleges around the world from, you know, published in every language and all that. So it's, 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 it was that too. They would actually wipe you out of history. It's like a history book, and they would wipe you out like you didn't exist to make sure that connection was broken. Somebody higher up had to make the call. I don't think it was the author. He didn't defriend me or anything. He said, oh, I'm so happy to, to announce the book is out. And since I had done interviews, I mean, I did tell him at one point about some, some real inside baseball stuff that happened and, uh, you know, and about the whole thing that I was going through then about not, you know, realizing that, that what I was writing was true. Cause it was this, you know, there's a whole sub story. That's a movie in and of itself you know, of a horror, horror, pure horror. And, uh, you know, about me discovering, uh, rediscovering again, I should say a, that what I was, what I thought was, I was just deluded earlier. And then, when I came back to LA, and then of course this film thing got going, I was reminded again that it was all real. And I was, I, it can't be. And I was being played by the producers, right? They were playing me. They knew that, you know, I, I just made me feel so like, oh God, you have no idea how that made me feel. It made me feel so bad. I to. <laughs> Oh, it's just so spooky and awful. Oh, God. But anyway, because it's kind of a life or death thing, you know, it's really a, a big deal, right? It's a real big deal. It's as big as anything in the world. And so it had to be excised from the book. The entire thing involving, you know, probably writers and producers and actors and things. And, you know, all that had to be scrubbed because of this problem. The author looked me up. Anyway, it's the pig's blood. You know, you go there and you, you can't wait to scroll down and see, you know, the, the write up. And I, I was actually pretty fair about what I recollected. And I gave them a break. I didn't hold any grudge about the um, nasty lies they were putting about me in the, in the press, you know, these awful, saying awful things. I, I knew why he was doing it. I mean, I, Felt like I left that world anyway. They didn't want me anymore. And so I thought, you know, otherwise, of course, I would have probably sued. Right? Because it was just it was just basically trying to do character assassination. And um, <laughs> come to think of it, you know, if that happened to anybody, you know, just that alone could break a person in two. They'd never recover. You know what I mean? That would make someone psychotic. That'd make somebody depressed. That'd make someone kill themselves. So, you know, I mean, I could only handle this as I could handle it. So when that happened and I went down and saw there was nothing in the book, like it wasn't there, you know, and uh, I realized I wasn't not the only one interviewed too. So there'd be a lot of other interviews with people that have, you know, some stature. So I... <laughs> I couldn't look again. You know, I felt traumatized. I'm, you know, I felt like that that trigger hit again, and, and I and then I tried to quickly busy myself with something else. They, that didn't really happen. I mean, it's not that bad. It's not a, because of me. It couldn't be. It's it's ridiculous. I'm nobody. It's I'm just out here doing nothing. You know, it's no, no. It's serious. It's really serious. It's the center of everything. You know, you're in denial. You won't look at it.
you shed it, the book, you ran away because you couldn't deal with how bad that it really is. It's just so far off the charts that, that it's not possible to process. That, you know, this makes the world 100,000 billion times worse than Pedogate, which is the, the worst of the worst, hurting children, right? But this goes to like, you know, murders and this goes to the heart and center of all the corruption combined. You know, A2 Brute, you mean so the author, the publisher, the producers, the public, the teachers, people can be blotted out from history like that. I mean, I've actually had the pleasure of being blotted out from history. You haven't lived till that's happened to you. So, you know, I'm just, I guess I'm dealing with it today because I, I've just been reflecting a lot the last few days. about, um, you know, my position in all this. And, and what the Lord revealed to me is it's like that I've kept belittling it, like it's not a big deal, you know what I mean? Like, so I look away from that book and like I just try to forget about it. I wouldn't talk about it here, you know? I just, I just, I don't know what it means. I, I, I'm afraid to ask the author what happened. I, I, you know, it's like I have a, a, a self-destruct mechanism going. It, it's, 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 it's terrible, but the question I would ask, not that I'd ever get a straight answer, which I'm, I'm, of course I wouldn't. Is it possible that that was excised from the book? You know, and all I did now, my only participation was answering a few questions, just like he said he put out to other people who were working around the same. He found people, you know, multiple people that had worked on the same movies and the same production of the same thing. So he would have multiple perspectives. So it couldn't be because of me, you know what I mean? But then it wouldn't make sense to have that not in the book. I just couldn't, you know, but at the same time, they couldn't let it go back to, to the Zeph report. Because that renders it invisible. That couldn't be true. I couldn't accept that, so I had to shut everything down and then act like it didn't happen. Because I... My mind can't get my, my mind can't get around that. It's like you know, it's almost trying to make me responsible for for screwing it all up, which I was just trying to survive. I wasn't trying to screw anything up, but oh boy, the wrath that came. And of course, after that, there's you know, there's obviously that was all done so that there'd be no way back. <laughs> So I don't know, you know, I mean, the Lord has showed me something very strong the last 48 hours. And that thing he showed me is about the power, the power that we have. Something was on the roof. The power that we have. And, uh, You know, it, 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 the ones that are in the walls. But it's more than that. It's about the supernatural power. Because everything I've described is not... it can't possibly exist. It's beyond, it's beyond the beyond of all beyond. And so it goes to supernatural powers. All this stuff, even, you know, being involved in any of that stuff is supernatural. It shouldn't, shouldn't have been. And so the lesson is, I think for me, is really First of all, God's not going to give you more than you can handle. So you 
maybe you, he puts you in denial or you know, looking away like that didn't happen, you know what I mean? Pretending it didn't happen. Pretending I didn't see that, that index in the, or the, the table of contents. Pretending I didn't see that. And now, I'm, I'm, today, I'm kind of dealing with it a little bit. Starting to. About that kind of, that level of, of, that level is beyond my capability of understanding right at the moment, but I will understand it soon. And um, it virtually means that one of us could bring down the entire world system. Oh my God. That's the, the inherent part of all this, isn't it? Yeah, like, well, just, you know, that, that, you know, if God's got you, if God's got your back, you know, you don't really need to worry about whether or not you've been shunned by this institution or that or this, you know, military industrial entertainment complex or what. It doesn't matter. And, you know, the other thing is I don't want to hold this author with any bitterness. I, yeah, he's frightened out of his mind. It's just, everyone's scared out of their mind, okay? So they just removed it from the book. Or they just didn't publish it. They, they interviewed and they oh, no, I can't, can't put it in there. You know, we got to live, you know? Anyway, he seemed to be sp- kind of spooked when I told him the story about how I was told by this casting assistant that was all real. He, he had the same call. I was in a story meeting with the producer, the director. He was going to be a directing debut. And it was, he was producing it, and he, and he says, he goes, I don't want to be responsible for you, you know, for, for you flipping out. And that response was so weird to me. It was almost as if he, then he knew everything. So this whole thing was just, a, like, this whole thing is a setup. And I immediately jumped on a plane. I went to Italy. And chased this girl I had a, you know, a fling with over the summer. I went chasing her and she became the mother, mother of my daughter. So it was, we were only able to tolerate each other for about a year. And now I love her. Just can't live with her. <laughs> Just, you know, but I went running after her and then she kind of put me back together. And then we flew back. And, uh, and there I was, just like Betty at uh, Mulholland Drive. Arriving on the uh, the set, you know, the first day of shooting. And I go up to the director. He goes, hey, we're making our movie. And I, I agreed to be an extra. And, you know, and so I was an extra. And I had long hair. And I still do, I guess. But, uh, yeah, that opening thing was, was shot at Paradise Cove in Malibu. And it had been raining for days and days. Then all of a sudden it just cleared up. It was one of those perfect Los Angeles days right after the rain. Everything is slight offshore breeze, you know, warm, whatever. And there were the scenes coming to life, you know, and I'm there I am watching and and I was just kinda like, Wow. It was just like so magical. It was just like uh the way that Betty and, and Mulholland Drive talked about going to the casting call and this time she's really going to be a star and, and she's so happy to have the opportunity and, and, you know, and she's so looks up to the big stars and to the glamorous Hollywood and all that, you know, she's, then it turns out she's uh, completely under my control and the whole thing is a game. But it was just like that. I was all back to door. I said, you know, all that that phone call that I got, I just put it out of my mind like it didn't happen, you know? So I just put it out of my mind. It's like it didn't happen. They're just making a movie. I was part of this. No conspiracy against me. There's no weird thing going on here. There's no separate knowledge that people know that play the joke on me. I don't know, but they know. None of that. Ever. Oh, that's all paranoia. I'm all back together now. The girlfriend is now the handler. I even remember some incident. 
where the, we had, they, you know, they opted, you know, in my opinion, they, they screwed up the whole thing. You know, they, 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 I could really give you a, a lot of bad mouthing of the thing, you know, but uh, hiring, you know, this model that couldn't act was a really stupid thing to do in a role that required really good acting. So, you know, but, but the thing is, she gained a little weight or something. And so I remember my girlfriend at the time, who's an Italian, you know, now here again, lives in Italy, um, looking at the ass of that girl and going, my ass is better than that. And laughing with her girlfriends or something. I remember that very well. I'm like, how odd of a thing to just what, like, hope your ass is better than that one. So that like that girl would possibly fail because, you know, you got her beat or whatever. And um, it, it was so, I, I should have realized right then and there this thing was going nowhere. But I, I was um, definitely a, under control. Completely. <laughs> and, uh, but I, you know, like I said, I could even remember details like that, which, which are very, uh, to me, are amazing when the, when the memories are so old. But it's because a lot of this stuff was so traumatized. I mean, it was traumatizing in coming down off of it and realizing, okay, so they, 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 they making this movie based on, and I quote, what the guy was saying was my own fantasies that I'm full with fantasy because they had to say that because they couldn't have it get back to the Zeph report, which is claiming that this stuff is real. You see what I mean? The whole thing was predicated on the idea that it was just a fiction, a fantasy. It's nothing to it. And then now today, of course, you know, now we have a big fight. I mean, they're willing to go to World War III over the same issue. Now, did I know anything about, you know, that I was, you know, the harm that could be done, like I say, that they were going to remove a whole film and films and stuff and projects out of a book? That's damage to those people, you know, too. I mean, that's really hardcore, if it's because the Zeph report exists, which is a thought that I rejected ultimately and, and originally. I rejected that completely because that freaks me out. I can't, I can't cope with that. And then, of course, you know, then the, the mysterious, you know, things that can happen to people, poisoning, accidents, whatever. You know, just get rid of the problem, you know. Problems still exist. You know, you know it's just one of those things. But anyway, it's all mainstream now. And, and, and you could call that gang stalking too. When people are being nice to you, and they all are harboring a secret. We're all part of a gang stalking operation, let's say. And you're the target. And they're not going to tell you what reality is. They're going to be in your reality to be like you. But really, they're keeping notes and they're scamming and playing games of how they can get the next pig's blood thing going. You know, I mean, if, if that's what's happening, that's a very sinister, awful thing. But that happens to people all the time. Maybe not quite as, you know, theatrical as that, as, 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 as dramatic as what I'm describing, but it happens all the time, you know, in families and, and uh, you know, where they get on, they know the secret. The secret is they're Satanists, okay? They do rituals. They do, you know, they're in, they're in the system. And um, you, no one's supposed to know about it. So the people, well, the labs, if you will, that aren't, they become the targets, you know? That's just... Kind of like by default. I don't see how you could listen to this testimony today and think there's anything other than total veracity with it. You know, or not write it up in a book. Well, but they can't. I mean, if, if someone wanted to, you know, document something, they could say, well, this, 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 and this, and they can't, it can't go here. It, um, we don't stop there. They said in Mulholland Drive that we can't, we can't go there. We're going to have to take that whole thing out of the book because we can't have the risk they might link up. We can't connect the two, you see. The soft kill has to happen, you know, because that's the stronger of the two. 
Well, it may have been the stronger of the two. It may have looked like taking candy from a baby, but I got news for you. You know, uh, the shoe is on the other foot, baby. And the Lord is striking back. And even one of us has the power to ruin all of you. We're like the warring angels that are sent here to the earth. And when that power is activated, I'll Katie bar the door. Because you know what? This whole place is going to go up. Now that I can say out of my soul. I don't know what it means. Maybe I'm full of it. Maybe it's just bravado. Maybe it's just anger pent up at this whole situation. Because, you know, attacking someone for just trying to survive... I saw this thing where they shot some girl in the street in Israel and they just watched her die. She just bled out. I hate seeing things like that. I said, please don't show these videos. I can't go back to Facebook if you keep doing that. Uh, But yeah... You know, I've, I've not, you know, I'm not angry. It looks like a personal anger. You know, I, I, I understand why it had to be, because I have understanding. But what it means is what's so freaking, freaking out about it. What it really means is what's so heavy. It's bigger than all of us. It's bigger than everything. It's bigger than, it's as big as God. It's as, it's as mysterious as mystery. It's, it's beyond the beyond. It's. It's, it's, it, it should, I guess people wind, when they get onto all this stuff, they wind up in a, in a loony bin because they're, they're called psychotic because there's no way you could piece this together. The only reason I can maintain a good, solid mind here is because um, the Lord never gives me more than I can handle for one thing. So, like, I couldn't deal with that author before. Now, maybe, now I'm looking at it a little more because I... You know what I mean? What the traumatizing thing is looking through there, expecting to see that you'd be there. Once again, you were excised out. Like I was the only guest ever on this buzzsaw thing that they had to just bury it. They filmed it, but they couldn't edit it. And then I had this long talk with Sean Stone about how he's trying to gently tell me <laughs> what I've been, what we already know. But he's trying to, you know, be a nice guy. And, and I suppose he is a nice guy, you know. Um, I'm just in a very unique position, very unique, totally unique. It's the most bizarre thing, but nobody planned it. I didn't plan it. I'm not the bad guy here, you know, but it it goes to, you know, everything you see in history, the whole world, what's happening to it. It's all related. You see, it's all part of this, this situation that I've been describing. So much part of it is it that there's a cause and effect aspect to it. And I would say this, that I guarantee you pretty much. I mean, no, I'm not going to guarantee anything. That's, That's not in good form with God. I mean, Lord, you know, like you said, the predictors will be wrong. So I'm not going to make any predictions because the Lord's told me, stop predicting. So I'm going to stop predicting. But I'll just say this. It sure feels like the end to me of everything because it seems like it's coming to a to a clash, you know, and one thing is going to remain. It's either going to be the Lord in his way or the devil in his way. And I'll tell you, my money is on the Lord, on Yahweh Elohim, the one, you know, God. I believe that God will be the one that remains and that the delusion and the ignorance and the and the pain and the suffering and all that awful stuff that, that Satan represents. And this horrible game that we've been talking about today. And the horrible, the horrible things that happen to people. And all the death and destruction. All the misery and toil and torment. All of that gone. And we'll see that day. I believe... We will see that day. We will see that day. Because, you know, part of this reminiscing, like songs that come up, I think it's really, you know, when when a song comes up into my head from the past, it's really like something like that. It was like something that was on the radio when I went to school, you know? It's almost like like things are being summed up 
for the end, you see. Summed up. And, uh, you know, round it up. We're, we're, we're summing it all up now. We're coming into the, you know, the final aspect of the, of the last act. We're in the third act, and now we're, we've had our d- deep, dark moment. But, you know, now it's like, you know, there's the ultimate battle between good and evil, between light and dark. And, and here, the, the rule of the day has been darkness the whole time. And they've been afraid of anything of the light. They even, they'd kick it out, right? They used to pretend it doesn't exist. They'd make sure it's never heard from again. They would blackball it, soft kill it. Make sure it didn't pollute anything. Make sure it didn't get out where it could do damage. And now that, that ship has sailed. I mean, that, it's out and it's doing damage. Huge damage to the world system. Which I guarantee you, you know, ultimately won't be here. And the things that used to the thing are so iconic. Just like you used to go to your favorite retail stores and all that. They're all going to be gone by next year. Yeah, same thing with this. The whole system. That's all going to be gone. You know why? Because there's no way anyone can make any revenue out of it for one thing. Entertainment has become the cheapest thing there is. You turn your phone on, there you are. You're, enter- you're entertained. Artists are going to be replaced with robots. It's over. <laughs> Except for the dwindling stuff, you know, for the celebrity worship and all that. Other than that, it's over. And uh, thank God for that. Did I end it? Did my plight end it? Um, well, mine and many others, but no, God ended it. But yes, our collective plight of the things that I've been describing today are, are huge. They're cosmic. They are. If you think that it's just about little old me and my little old experience and you don't see the bigger aspect to it, you're, you're, you, you've got to because your survival may count on that. And everything we do, everything that we're connected with, it's, it's a big deal. You are a big deal. I'm a big deal. It is a big deal. The children of the Most High are a big deal. Um, they're not supposed to be here for one thing because they're light, you know, and there's light walking around. There's a problem. So you see the proof now is in the pudding and I've offered proof here about, you know, you might think, oh, well, what I'm doing is nothing, but would they actually go to the, I mean, you know, being ditched when you're a kid and all that, they love to do that in gang stalking. You know, like I say, the pig, pig's blood is the most fun ritual that they do. They, they get the most enjoyment out of that, where they set you up like, it's all magical, you know what I mean? It's like everything you wanted, here it is. And then snap, they rip it out, right? Well, there's a cure for that. Don't be enamored of the world and don't need to have uh, to go to the prom. You don't need to go to the prom. You don't need to have them applaud. You don't need any of it. You, need not, you don't need anything. They don't have anything you really need. You were programmed to need. It's not a real need. Walk away. You know, the other thing I would say about this is, uh, and this may be threatening to people, but, you know, uh, for all you artists out there that are in the wilderness, I don't really care about music, actually. Or films, you know what I mean, or or, or books, or anything. I mean, I I, re- I had to. I, it's a scary thought. I don't really care. I, I mean, I care when I'm there doing, I'm having fun, and I love working with people, and I love you know sharing, and and uh, but I I don't care. You know what I mean? I don't. The result, I don't care. I don't care. It's it's like people don't understand. I'm not, there's no one evaluating it. It doesn't matter. There's no judge. I don't care. I'm just playing like a child. That's all. That I care about, of course. But whatever happens after that, I don't care. You could say it sucks. You could say it's good. It's irrelevant to me. It doesn't matter. I'm not here on the earth like with the concerns earth people have. I'm here trying to survive. I got other concerns. And, you know, and this, this, this other thing, 
Uh, music is like anything else. It's a sideline. It's a sideshow. It's not the main event. It's not what's happening. You know, it's like, uh, you know, brain surgery is a sideshow as well. You know, it does, it does, it not all these things are sideshows. So though they might take center stage or, the, you know, people are, are competing and they're trying to evaluate all this stuff. At the end of the day, I had to do some real soul searching on this. I wanted to know what I really cared about, what my priorities were. So the last, you know, couple days, three days, it's, all this has been hitting me really hard, you know. And I realize that the only important thing about doing these projects or anything is just, you know, it's just, the, it's just the, like playing, you know, in the field or, you know, it's, it's, it's just, that's the main thing. It's, it's a, it's a fluid motion, but it's not the thing ultimately. So it doesn't matter what people, you know, they say this, or they say that, they, 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 they say, oh, you could be better. You could be worse. You could be better and worse. Don't, don't have any place in my vocabulary. There's no better or worse. That we'll really nail it this time. It's really going to be great, you know. And I've I've I use those terms, but I realize it's not real with me, you know. And I let's think about I was you know thinking about writing something and and thinking about the result of if you're soft killed and you write a book, does that mean you have to like, you know? Uh, does that mean does that mean just this just going to be this is the way it's just going to be you know it's you could write it but no one's going to care you know so then it it's not really about the evaluation or how good or bad it is it's just it's only the actual doing of it that's the the thing and the result really doesn't matter because it's doesn't matter anyway it, even if there was something to look forward to you know some pig's blood thing right even if there was that you know someone was waiting for your creation whatever it is. It doesn't matter because what's really happening here is the divide of light and dark. It's what God is doing. You know, it's, that's, that's the thing. And if whatever, wherever the chips fall with all this stuff is fine. I, I look at the, the Zeph report and then the music that's, you know, basically for this. I'm not playing any music today, but it's just, it's just uh, uh, an expression. It's a, it's a fun, it's a capturing of something in time in that moment. And that's what it's been from the beginning. And it has a prophetic kind of signature as well and all that. It's got a, got a, a thing. It's just coming from this side, something from this side of things. It's got nothing to do with the world. It has nothing to do with, you know, the, 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 the people wanting to evaluate things one way or the other. There's no evaluation. It doesn't matter. It's just children playing. That's all it is to me. And that's the way it's going to stay because I, all that's been taken away, you know, the result and, and, you know, the, the, the people judge this or that. I'm not even in society enough to, or in any kind of civilization. I'm, not, I'm just in way out there, you know. And, and so, it, you know, good or bad, both terms are almost irrelevant. It doesn't matter. Does it please you? Yes. Okay, then that's all, you know, that's it. Of any kind of thing, you know. It, it, it's, it's, this is the evolution of it, of, of the Lord walking us out. Walking us out, walking us to, oh, we're going towards something for sure. And that's the thing that's important to me. But I do music because I can, because I play, because I breathe. Uh, someone else might do dancing. Someone else might do a painting. It's just, it's, it's just, it's a pure thing. It's got nothing to do with uh, some motive, some ulterior motive or some ultimate motive. It just has to do with uh, the the purity of you know, being a lamb, being, being a child of God, just in pro doing what you do, just sharing your gift. You know, the same thing with the, the show. It's not about evaluation of this. The music was originally, so I would have music to play on the show because I couldn't get the uh, music I wanted because there was copyright problems. And that's how it started. So that's really, it's just, they're both connected. And neither one is evaluatable. You know, of like, oh, well, you could do better if you had, like, more guests, or you could do better. It would be a lot better if you were, you know, this, or if you were that. No, it wouldn't be. I'm just in me. That There's no better, there's no worse, there's no nothing. There is no, it could be better, there's no, it could be worse. 
There's no, um, you know, it would be better if you were on satellite. It would be better if you were on terrestrial radio or if you did this, that, and the other thing. No, there is no better or worse. There is no evaluation. We've gone so far beyond all that. We're so far beyond, you know, this, this I, I used to really live and die for evaluation, a critique. Oh, that Zephyr report's really good. Oh, it sucks. It, you know what I mean? And then it just became irrelevant. It really doesn't matter. The only thing that matters here is the truth. Did the truth, you know, did, did the Lord let me speak the truth? Did he help me to speak the truth? Did something happen? Did something get said that helped somebody? Or, did, or that the Lord wanted said, did something happen here? That's all that counts. Same thing with the music, same thing with any other art form, I, you know, writing, the books, whatever. It's just, you know, uh, and anything else I've done. It just basically, did something happen? Yes or no? Yes. Well, as long as it keeps happening, then it's, then it's perfect because all the works are timeless and, you know, it's just, it has to do with something not of what it looks like. But something else. I know that's the way it is with the music. It's not about what it is and compared to what, you know. The, the world's, there's never the twain shall meet between those two things. The world and, the, and, 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 and wherever we're going. Two completely opposite trajectories. Two completely opposite things. I, my, my interest in music has to do with the mathematics of the universe. And with, with God's math and with frequencies and with, you know, vibes and with, you know, playing with those things and, and the, you know, and, and the interrelationship between frequencies in the studio that are, you know, what makes some compete and others not, you've given all, all things are equal. And those kinds of questions are fascinate me, you know, so that's why I'm more of like an engineer, producer and you know, and, uh, and all that. I'm really into that. I really do want to understand the way things make you feel, you know, and, and that's very important. The other thing is um, sound itself, which I suppose you could call, so call the word of God music, right? But, but more than that, it's sound, you know, where it takes you. Certain frequencies actually open up doors and, and lead to elsewhere, and that's a very important concept because ultimately when we are not these corporeal bodies like this, it, it's, all, it's all just this dance. You know, it's all this, this uh, fluctuating of frequencies and energies and things like that. And, and it's like the Lord breathing, right? And we're just part of that breath. And it's, it's really good to know that that's ultimately the way it is. Because that takes off all the, the yoke of the heaviness of the world and of having to achieve something or having to be, you know, lauded or, or derided, depending on how you did and all those kind of things. And um, ultimately, you know, we should be worried, in my opinion, about did we, were we really obedient to the Lord? Did we really do what we were called to do, you know, in the end? And I would say that would be more important. But the things we do for the things we create and things like that, wouldn't it be nice if we could be like children again and and not have any, you know, uh, onus on it of, of having to do it a certain way, or do a certain thing, but just to be playing and to be free. Isn't that something? You know, that's, I know that really... You know, I mean, it drove my, my uncle nuts. I just remember this time we were sitting there at the table, and I've said this before, and, and this was when I, Trish got me into painting, you know. Same thing with the painting, you know. It's like, you know, the first thing that you do when you paint something is like, well, that's pretty good. That, that, could be in a, that could be in an art show. That could be in a gallery somewhere. Oh, really? And that's the beginning of the end, right? When you have that kind of thought in your head. That's the beginning of the whole thing falling apart. Why can't you just have the painting and just say, wow, cool, you know? Why does there have to be some master plan? I mean, I don't know. You know, there could be. But by and large, I mean, you know, people who paint, I mean, to me it was just I painted because 
I didn't think I could. You know, I never, no one ever asked me to paint, but Trish got me going with it. So for me, the painting was always a free expression. I never had any plan of going to any gallery, and I was doing it. But the things I painted freaked me out. Yes, that's what stopped me. The same thing happened with the novel I was writing out of the, uh, the Great Fear. A couple of the novels hit the wall. But when I was writing that, um, that, that there was a, an abuse scene that happened. Uh, and a child committed suicide. And right at that point, I just like, I just shut down. I didn't know why it shut down. I didn't, you know what I mean? I was completely out of touch with my own reality. So I just kind of like, all of a sudden I just went on to something else. Like nothing, right? You just, who does that? 380 pages later, you're just like, oh, you know, screw it. I'm, I'm really doing this. You know, I mean, it's, no, it, it, it was a, now it's all come full circle. So now we all, you know, the, the whole thing's come full circle. And what it turns out to be is that Satan does everything that's anti-God, right? So all the, 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 uh, the exact mirror opposite of things that God wants, Satan does. You know, again, hurting children, traumatizing people, playing tricks on people, bullying people, uh, doing, doing, you know, harm, harming their reputations and their careers, you know, uh, being uh, judgmental to the point where sometimes people kill themselves. And, and you know, it's uh, no matter how someone, you know, the, 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 it just has to be better, but, you know, the, this pushing of these kids to, to perform and then evaluation and perform and then more evaluation and, you know, and then, the, you know, the Olympic coach pushing, oh, I pushed him too hard, he's dead now. And, you know, the, there's all this angst in our society, all these kind of signs that something is wrong. And that's one. That's another one. And, um, you know, that, that, that the things here upon the earth are so important that uh, you know, people kill themselves to get them. And then, there's the, then they're willing to do almost anything. The civilization itself covering up the, the ultimate trades, you know, creating disease, creating foods that are harmful to people of uh, the chemtrails people talk about, the uh, wars, drug trafficking, weapons trafficking, human trafficking. All these awful evil things are institutionalized and they are the, sac the sacraments of Satan. And they are guarded and, and fostered and revered by the people who are in charge or who practice all that. And uh, what they want is a one world government, one world system under Lucifer where no one is allowed to be outside that family. Everyone has to be Luciferian. Everyone has to be initiated. Everyone has to be indoctrinated. Everyone has to be on the page, uh, chipped, whatever it is, genetically, uh, however they do it. They, yeah, every, no, no, every, no one is exempt and no one will be allowed to, 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 to be separate from the system. Never again. Jesus is out of here. Then it comes back to Jesus. He's the separator. There is no other separator. So he's the, he's the culprit that they want to eradicate from the entire earth, figuring then they could finally have peace. They don't realize that then they wouldn't be here, but that's for them to discover later on. <laughs> and when you think about things like that, then you... Here's the good news. When you think about things like that, what happens is people, um, you know, brethren can be much more, not just tolerant, but loving toward one another because there isn't this big judgmental thing going on or, you know, people step on your toes, you, you know, you let it go. You know what I mean? You just, there's something bigger going on. So everything falls away like that. So you can love. Why? You can love because... Uh, it doesn't matter to hold on to the hate, to the grudge, to this, that. It doesn't matter anymore because Jesus, because he's, he, the, the work is being done by the Lord here, and it's glorious. It's magnificent. So all the other concerns that people have and, and, and the dramas in everybody's lives and all that tends to, you know, get a second place eventually when the Lord has his way with you. And what that brings you is, wait for it, Peace, inner peace, perfect peace. That's what comes. Even if I 
get all upset about politics. And I get plenty upset when they pick on Donald Trump. I mean, I, it really just hurts me to my core. Still, I take it in prayer. You know, if I'm bugged, I, I, I go to the Lord, right? And it's back in, it's, it's back in context, isn't it? It's, it's, it's not to be treated like, you know, like everything else. I mean, when I was in the world war, I wanted to really go over, you know, really kind of a lot of things I wouldn't even do because I was just so hard on myself. I was just pushing myself to, to get the A. I would always want the A in the class. I always got A's, right? I always want to get the A. And so much judgmentalism, really. And, um, and of myself and others as well. I mean, if you, you know, to the point where everything was miserable. And now I would say that there's just a lot more fun because you're just not there. The same thing with people. People wonder, well, what about, you know, what about, uh, you know, I mean, sometimes people have said, well, this kind of music, you know, music wise, why are you involved in that? I think it's like, well, why not? I don't care what the form is. I just want to, I just want, you know, it's like, I just want to have fun doing it. I'm just into it, whatever it is, you know, and, and, uh, that's the other thing that happens. You start getting, you know, you, if, if the Lord would just take a little bit more of this away from me, I could just kind of like be here as a guest and sort of, you know, as a guest visitor, and just sort of like groove on lots of stuff. Just really, uh, I, I, if there wasn't so much pain and there wasn't so many children crying and there weren't so, so many broken hearts, I'd just, you know, be here as a vacation. But, um, the job we have and what the Lord is doing is he's going to clean all this stuff up and we're here witnessing it. And so in a sense, we're cleaning it up. You know, I mean, it's, 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 it's the process has begun and that's going to affect everything. The arts for sure, sciences, education, all these things, people's mind, what they think about. I could feel a certain kind of, you know, dare I say it, not positivity, but like a, like another force, just bam, blowing this whole thing apart. And uh, that's what I'm interested in. Like as an artist, I'm interested in this, this thing. And then, and then as we reminisce, it's funny. The past changes. You can have things you used to remember a certain way. Now look back. Now you remember it another way. So something changed. something really changed. People are not going to just accept Jesus Christ like, oh, I, I gave my life to Jesus. It doesn't work in America like that. It has to be that the Lord touches that person and brings them along and then they, they're they there. You know, the Lord's almost got to grab them. You know, this sort of uh, mass baptism, mass, you know, conversion, all that. I take that with a grain of salt. I mean, I know people want, and the Lord is good to, you know, when you cry out to the Lord, I mean, I'm, you know, pretty much he's there, right? He's there. He's there for everyone. But then there's something about his timing and his way of doing things. So, you know, that's why the prophetic is so needed. You go, well, this person, you know, they may not belong to God right now, but, but they belong to God. And that may not be that they'll ever be conscious of that. So that's, that's the thing about judge, judging too. You know, you just, it's hard. Um, some people have made a choice for the devil, let's say. It's only two choices, right? And um, they go to the grave like that. That's it. They're there for life. And then others, prodigal sons and daughters. That's why I asked the Lord to, you know, help, help find them. You know, but the Lord's like, well, they're not lost. I know exactly where they are. I'm dealing with them. And it's like, okay, you got this. Yeah, yeah. I'm just here for wherever you want me to go, Lord. Whatever you want me to do. And, uh. This was quite a journey on this show today. Well, it's, you know, 
a lot of times I would just deny that I existed, you know, so it would be, you know, like I wouldn't see myself as a, a writer or a, you know, of a, 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 an action that I would do. I would deny all of that. And um, then I could survive. If I ever acknowledged that I was involved in all these things, and then, then you'd have to deal with it. You know, it, all the implications of, of, of shunning and, you know, bullying. And so I just would deny that I am really a person in a way. And so nothing happened. <laughs> See what I mean? I've, this is... The, well, it's been a survival mechanism. It's not like I want to do it on purpose. It's what I have to do to survive. And then another thing I realize is that when people say stuff, when I say stuff here that I believe or don't believe or that from now on I'm going to do this or that, it's most of the time it's just a, it's, it's not true. It's, it's I'll say it and then the next day I'll violate it. So I can't rely on that. You know, so there can't be that much declarative sentences, you know, declarative sentences like, I am this, I am that, I do this, or I do that. Do you? What? what? It's almost like all that identity with things you do is falling away at this time. And I say, Lord, take it away. Take my worrying mind away, Lord. In Jesus' name, and with that, I bid you shalom. I'm going to, uh, yeah, get out of here and, and uh, contemplate further. But, uh, you know, I don't know that there'd be any value going and trying to really evaluate. I've just, you know, I, I probably it's better to face it and, you know, ask the author what happened. But it's, you know, it, the only reason it has any, you know, importance is because of, you know, the, the what happened years ago with, with movie making. I mean, if that wasn't, you know, and it, it, it's, it's and then slandering and all the things that happened, you know, and, uh, you know, the injustices and things that need to be brought in light and all that. I'm, I, I think, you know, I, I think I'm doing that. I think I've, I'm, I'm staying conscious of it, but I'm waiting on the Lord to see what he does with it. It's. It's obviously not hurting me, and it's not causing some kind of a, a bitter root. That's the, the other thing I want to deal with. Maybe we'll deal with that tomorrow, the idea of being bitter. Um, I see a lot of people get bitter, you know, with the world, and, you know, and, and who can blame anyone? No one. Everyone understands why that, that happens. Uh, it's very understandable and justifiable, Absolutely. But it's not a burden I want to carry. You know, ultimately, I don't want to be, you know, have any conflict with anyone. I mean, if someone can have a conflict with me, they can write whatever they like. I just count it for Jesus. I say, well, that's a blessing because guess what? The Lord said they'd slander me. They'd bear false witness. They would do all this stuff. They have. They, they're going to do the biggest blood. They're going to gang They're going to do all these things. Cost of discipleship. You follow Jesus, that's what happens. If the world even knows you're, you're slated for God, ultimately, even if you don't know yourself what you believe, okay, they're going to come down on you anyway, ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're going to start in. And <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's no real way out of it. Anyway, I will see you next time. Thank you for indulging me today. It was a heavy day, heavy day for me. Hard day. I'm just trying to, you know, and sometimes I do wonder what if a song from the 60s pops into your head and you don't know where it came from, then you start, you know, creating a, a rearrangement and a cover and all that of something that you would never buy as a record to listen to. You, you know, you start wondering, is there a remote control going? Is, is this an experiment? Did someone, you know what I mean? And maybe I better cut it out. I have to go think about that. <laughs> I will, and I'll see you next time.